So the prompt that I'm about to show you has already landed me on the first page of Google. Check this out. This is the front page of Google. We go down a little bit. There we are. Boom. And it was the exact keyword that I was targeting. And this is the one that we were behind, the New York Post. So we are now ahead of the New York Post. Stay tuned for top secret stuff. All right, everybody, welcome back. This is part number two of revealing to you the absolute perfect prompt. So if you didn't see the first video, I will do a quick synopsis. So I have set up a multi-layered prompt that if when filled out, it's about 2000 words. And there are a bunch of components to this prompt. You can see the first part is very structural, uh, giving a guidance for the structure. And then here, here's the additional information and requirements for the blog. So I've set it up so you can have bullet points there. So that's very nice and it gives the AI, whichever you're using, some kind of structure, right? And gives some kind of better guidance. So in the first video, we discussed brand and tone. So those were two very important pieces. If you wanna take a look, I'll leave the link to that video. In this video, we are talking about two other very, very important uh, considerations and prompts. So things to include in your prompt. The first one we will talk about is the target keyword. So op seems obvious, but you still need to create, do some of your own keyword research. Everyone has their own process and plug in the target keyword as like this into the prompt. So for myself, everyone has their own way of doing it. I went through first Google ads keyword planner. I found some keywords that were trending in the right direction. Uh, I think I landed on this one. And then another way that you can cross reference and I'm, I'm just using free tools because not everyone has the paid uh, SEMrush tool. I mean, that thing's like a hundred bucks a month. So totally understand. Uh, Ahrefs actually has a neat keyword generator that it shows you the volume, the monthly volume and the keyword difficulty. So this is the one I chose 150 pretty good keyword difficulty. I like that. That's not bad. So we're going to use this. <coughs> Excuse me. And then what you're going to do is simply let's do it without formatting. There you go. Post that. I'm trying to, you probably already saw it anyway. It doesn't matter. Uh, another thing you can do with this actually, I'm constantly updating my prompts because from each piece, I'm like, oh, it's missing this, it's missing that. So I'm constantly making updates. What you can add is how many times you want them to actually use this keyword. Depending on which AI you're using, they might miss it sometimes. Usually it's pretty good, but doesn't hurt to even further specify. You can just put it in brackets like, please use this keyword throughout the blog at least, I don't know, six times, something like that. So that part is fairly simple. Uh, the next part, as you probably already saw, it, this is very, very important and you can do a lot with this. This is the goal of the blog. Now you can do this in a myriad of ways. And I think this involves some creativity. So, you know, I don't like the plug and play stuff. Like anytime you're dealing with a creative form of digital marketing, you're going to have to use some creativity. We can't, you know, people can't do all the work for you, which is what makes your content stand out and be unique. So for this particular one, I chose the keyword ethical activewear. So, I'm kind of trying to make a somewhat controversial piece. So you can go about this keyword in many different ways, right? And if you don't guide the AI you're using, it's just gonna do something random. So it's always better to have the goal of the blog. And I've been doing a lot of research on ethical activewear and there's lots of companies that are claiming they're ethical, but really it's just lipstick on a pig with slave labor and, you know, using unhealthy inputs for the manufacturing. So this is an example. Uh, let's try to zoom in so you guys can see better. So this you can set up on your own, <clears throat> but it's a very important piece you're gonna wanna plug into the prompt. I've written the goal of this blog is to take a deep dive into the active clothing manufacturing industry, open the eyes of the target audience. Now, as a preview, the target audience will be a separate section in the blog. So if you have this prior, the AI will know, okay, I know 
which target audience I'm speaking to. Uh, the target audience are individuals who are active, they have disposable income, and fans of active wear, athleisure clothing, and everything in between. <clears throat> These people normally don't look at price tags, and they don't look at how the clothing is made, either. Companies like Lululemon, Nike, and Patagonia preach their sustainable manufacturing. So I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm trying to, at the end, you know, the goal of this blog is to be thought-provoking, controversial, and push the boundaries. And finally, this should push some type of emotional response that digs deep and forces readers to take action. So as you can see, this is very important, and I hope this was a good enough example for what you guys and gals can do with your content like what are you hoping to accomplish with this content uh, some other examples that i came up with that i've had in the past with other clients and and you know my own situation uh, other examples you can lead them to visit other pages on your website that could be a goal to click a call to action on the page to book a consultation that's a pretty popular one depending on you know what you're doing and to buy a product or service on the page. Now, this is obviously open to your imagination. Uh, I hope I've done enough to show you what this, the goal of the blog and how important that is, what it means. So yeah, there is really no rubric for the direction that you take this in. You guys can really push the boundaries, as I've said in this. You guys can do whatever you want with it. And as long as you provide it, some good information and direction. I think it's going to give uniqueness to your blog, which I speak in every video. Each blog is the goal is to be unique. You don't want a cookie cutter approach. Like when you go on Google, every article seems to be the same. It's the ones that stand out that are different in the end of the, at the end of the day are the ones that are going to be higher up on Google. Now in the first video, I use this prompt. I was showing you an example of a recent article that I did <clears throat> and just after a day it was already ranked and it was already getting traffic so I want to show you how much it's getting now so this was the day that I did the first video and it started getting impressions right away and just this past week it started doing this so pretty interesting a total of seven clicks this might not be the greatest but I've had other articles where the trend was not nearly as like this and now I'm getting upwards of 300 clicks per month from blogs like that that didn't have this kind of trend. So we're going to have to see where this goes. I think the low CTA, this is not good for my, my standards. Got to just change up the, the title and, and maybe play with the image. <clears throat> but you can see, as I showed you in the beginning, I was first trying to catch up to the New York Post. I was behind and now we are up here for this one. I was the only one, the only keyword I was market uh, ranking for was when you put 2023 at the end, which probably doesn't drive as much traffic. This was here already like last week. And for the other one, I was maybe on page three and now I'm already on page one. So I'm not going to say it's solely because of that prompt, but that prompt really, really helps guys. I hope you use it. Uh, provide me feedback how things are going uh, I would love to know and uh, yeah let's make unique content great again cheers